when the people came to me and I said, please, you can have this. And I remember the immediately the time when uh, we owned the building. The only consolation that the former landlord gave to us was, you can have this, you can have this income. Yeah, my wife knows it. You can have this income because they will come and support you so that even you maintain. And look at those days that uh, mortgage rains in those times that the whole America was in a serious crisis. That was the time I'm talking about. Everybody was running away. Even those times when you were able to run away from your own home, you celebrate for running from your home. It, people come to you to learn how you were able to dodge your own mortgage. Man, what a silly. And that was the time we were taking closely to 20K mortgage on our head. And this man told us, this is it. You can get this income to support your mortgage. And that we sympathize with him and encourage us that maybe that will support us. And trust me, listen to me. That very meant we signed the lease to own this building. I don't know whether it was someone who went to them to announce to them that the Canadians are taking over the building. Some, excuse me. Let them even come to us and give us the keys. We are vacating our term. That alone could have given us a heads up to plan. You will come down here, you will find one key lying down. You will go up, you cannot open the door. And by the time we break somewhere at the door, empty building. And that is where if you don't have God, you will have a low pressure. This one is not high pressure. Low pressure, straight for. Nobody beating you, but you'll be crying. We pick all these keys. We spoke to God. You ordered our step to take this decision. You see, because that is the time you have to speak the faithful saying. Because that circumstance is different from what you are experiencing. But hopefully what you are experiencing, there is a way and how God says about it. And so, even to extend some people, excuse me, when that time they were leaving this church, those that knew little history about what we were going to, they said we were going and we will see how they will keep the building. Everyone knew our back and face was at the cross. But ladies and gentlemen, we kept the faith. We spoke the faithful saying that there is God who sustains. There is God who takes care. And please, I like your support. I like whatever you are doing. But let me be honest be to you before God and man. Sometimes others' advices may don't talk like that. Otherwise, people will not be serious to support. Please, you support, you support yourself. But the truth and the faithful saying must be spoken. This building standing in has no pressure of what soul ever. Amen. That's the faithful saying. You see, God, he says that God blesses and add no what. So, you see, he is so good that he won't give you a wife that, that, that at midnight you will be thinking of how to go home. He won't give you a husband that you will be thinking of how this life will continue. I'm talking about the faithful saying. Listen, I want to tell you that is what God is saying. We can start the year and you see it so ugly. You see things happening. You see things falling apart left and right. As the psalmist says, thousands shall fall on my left and 10,000 on my other side. But your eye will witness. I want to tell you, we have started the year 2019. But the faithfulness of God over you is what I'm talking about. You will make it this year. You will be so successful this year. It shall be well with you this year. You will prosper in all your endeavors. You will not die. You will live and celebrate the goodness of God. That's what I'm talking about. The faithful say. That's what I'm talking about. The faithful say. I don't care what you are going through. I don't care what is happening. I don't care what someone is saying. Listen to me. What I'm talking about, the faithfulness, I will soon point something to you. That he said it, you re we read it together. He said, when you are faithless, he's talking about human nature. He's talking about human character. Please, I don't sometimes come here to down or play down someone or even my wife. Even she being sitting there can sometimes be in a circumstance and being a hill climb 
to my worship of God. You understand me? God and that devil have no respect out of what human circumstance can come your way. It can turn against you and you will think you are the only man in Jerusalem. But he's saying the faithful is that God still remains faithful. God still remains faithful. He says, and that time, all that you need is a spirit of endurance. You know, sometimes you just have to take time and endure things. I fell in them at times, so it can happen to you. Sometimes you feel like dropping it. Sometimes you feel like giving up. Paul, through the word of God, by the message of the Holy Spirit, he said, you just need an endurance. You just need to stand in there. You just need to say, my God, who did it yesterday, is able today. Come on, somebody. Worship the Lord with me. He said, he says, I, I endure. I endure. And he said, for the sake which I am enduring this, some people are elected. When I give up, I give up on them. You see, there are seas in you. There are families in you. There are tomorrows in you. There are lives in you. I just sometimes imagine if that time 12 years ago, if I had not taken this faith from which the Lord directed me, I don't know where we would have been right here. You see, you are, you are today are some generations tomorrow of your future. You see, you don't have to fail some people. You don't have to fail that family. And that is why you need an endurance. Sometimes they would tell the woman, me, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. Now push, push, push. It, it, nobody is punishing that woman. Nobody is mean to that woman. For the sake that you can bring someone to life. We don't know that time, whether the person is the next president. We don't know that time, that person is when even at the cost of breathing, he will die. He will save you or take care of you. The Bible says that Rachel, when she was in the state of labeling, bringing forth this son, what do you call it? Benjamin. He said he couldn't take the course and he wanted to give up. He said, no, when you give up, you kill the baby. At the long last, when he pushed up and he brought forth Benjamin, he gave up the goose. And listen to the Bible, the things that Benjamin even did in her absence. You see, there are so many things. There are so many things. There are so many things. You see, I, 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 was, I was sitting down and I was saying, what, what, what a talk can I do to honor my father? I'm sorry, I'm not here to praise anything and I was thinking ah, what are the things he likes and I was thinking you know in our family we like cars so I was saying would I praise him by learning up about 25 cars so yes and by the grace of God I've got about 30 cars sitting in Ghana I'm not joking I am a car dealer I can learn about these 30 cars and follow it with one of my escalator, the best in town. All people, all people to see that this man likes car. Uh, and I said, no, that won't honor him. I said, what can I do again? I, I was looking at the things he liked and see what, and I couldn't find anything. You see, life, I mean, is such that I was, I was asking myself, what kind of befitting, I mean, this thing, Iberia. He, he, he is a king at the mother's side, king, royal house from the father's side, everywhere is a royal man. So when you look at this such level of uh, funeral, we're talking about celebration. I can't call this funeral. And I can't see a budget that can take care of this family. And I said, okay, then if he needs a befitting family, burial. But let me tell you, as I am standing here, I am saying it to the glory of God. No contribution or not. I told the family, you don't need to decide the date based on me. If you want my daddy to have the best barrier on planet Earth, I can do it today. What I mean, listen, I'm not bragging. I'm bringing something out. But no one knows how he has suffered on me. Even on all things, no one knows. And even as now he is dead. He doesn't know what he has left behind. You see, the legacy that we leave are our praise today. Some people are here. Nobody knows. Sometimes I was talking like this and I said, listen, I suffer for this church because I don't know any of these children. Maybe he is my tomorrow pastor. And I want to tell you the truth that with all the suffering and with all the crime that we go into, mark it and see, nobody will take up this church, let's say two years time, three years time, you will have a wallet to think about mortgage. 
you listen to me. And listen to me. Write it down and let it see a prophecy. By 10 years to come, this church will be everywhere on the face of planet Earth. You see, I am pointing something. I told you, forget about me and let me talk to you. I am pointing out the resource of endurance. The resource of an endurance. A plan will tell you one day, one day all my house I'm living in were on foreclosure. Trust me, foreclosure completely. And that time I, I babysit her baby, that was Andrew. And she came to me and I didn't know what to do next. So I told her and we chatted. And when we chatted, I never asked her for a cent. Trust me. By the time she picked the baby and got back home, I had a call from her husband. And when I went, she said, oh, my wife and I have decided that we don't want this house to go on foreclosure. And then as we were talking, before I left the house, they handed it to me, a check of $13,000. That was about 13 years ago because we've been here for 12 years. And this happened in a year. So 13 years ago, issue I'm talking about. So when they gave me check, I also promised them, you will have it back. And then I look at their face. And the day after two weeks, God performed a miracle. So when I was taking the check back to them, when I paid them and I said, for this sacrifice that you did, I am telling you the truth. Wherever I preach, your name will be mentioned. Amen. So, regardless, I never thought of what I have said. But I've noticed something, even especially uh, last week. I was ministering and I went to stand in front of one of the women. And I, I was it you? And I started calling her Abna before I realized Abna was in Dubai. <laughs> are you getting it? You, you see, as I, I, I spoke, I called her name Abna. And so in the middle, I saw I was not talking to Abna and I... God reminds that uh, uh, she is in Dubai. You see, that is what, when it happened, when Mary Magdalene endured the suffering, the Bible says, Jesus said, everywhere that this gospel will be preached, your name will be called. You don't know what is coming tomorrow. You don't know what is coming. As, as I am walking, I'm not walking of the trouble of thinking of someone whose father is dead. I'm walking of imagine. Yesterday, for instance, I called one of my source and I said, please shop for me. If you can get one of the luxury, uh, luxury uh, what we call it, uh, no, not gaskets. I won't carry it from here. I was looking for the car, the, 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 the Cadillac one. I said, why can't I take the latest one in town so that I put my father in it when we are? I don't want the one in hand. Then that one also, I drop it. I don't know what to do again. Yeah. You see, what am I talking about? When we, it will get to a tab, someone will satisfy you so much so that you will feel like wanting nothing, Amen. nothing, 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 nothing. I'm telling you, I, I remember when they deported my wife, and my wife went back to Accra, and that time I was with my children. Mary was seven years old, and Samuel was six, and Samuela was eight, eight years old. And in Ghana, I was not living with these children. They first lived with their aunt, and then later on when we came here, they lived with our house lady that w we adopted in Ghana. So I didn't know how to attend women. I didn't know a clue about girls. I'm telling you the truth. So sometimes I sit in the room, they look at my face, I look at their face. I, I remember one morning, that time we've come to America fresh. And one morning, we, we, whatever we said we were going to do, we were in trouble. And before I realized, we've locked ourselves. And we were behind the building. So we have to go and bath someone's house. Oh, my goodness, I don't want to go further with that experience. And then when we came, these girls were looking at me. I was looking at them. And uh, even the girls were then bolder than the men. Quite who look at me. And if they made me feel like crying. 
Do you understand me? And uh, I remember last week I was asking her about one of her teachers in school. Was it cold school? The teacher would call me in the middle of class and I would drive to the school and he would ask me, Pastor Samuel, when I look at your daughter, I can't teach. Is there anything I can do to help? I said, you can't replace a mother. <laughs> so, so please, let life go on. And then when we, I go to the school, the teacher will wish little, I will read little more, and then <laughs> we, we let life go on. And let me tell you the truth. Last week, for instance, my senior daughter, Samuela, came to my room. And he said, Dad, when are you want to come to go to that class? And I said, I'm going this and that. And my daughter talked with me. And they said, Dad, if you want to consider investment or if you want to talk about money, don't worry. And I said, oh, daughter, you can't handle my budget. He said, Dad, you know who am I? I'm telling you, my daughter showed me her account. I nearly fell collapse. <laughs> I said, so you are richer than me? You are not, no, you don't know who can take care of you. You see them like leaves. You don't know when they start to germinate. And you don't know when they start to bear flower. And you don't know. You see, let me tell you, it's good to endure. Amen. It's good to endure. It's good to endure. I have seen husbands for the sake of budget, they run away and leave wives. I have seen wife for the sake of what, one, two, three, they run away and leave men. Wherever and whatever you go into, just stand enduring. There is a future coming, my goodness. You, oh, come on. What am I talking about? Is that man, Paul, who spoke about endurance crazy? No. We're talking about a lawyer, a Pharisee, a, 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 a lawyer indignant in the word of God. But as the time he was talking, he was in chains. Paul was in chains. He could have done anything to come out. But he said, no, endurance. Because others are elected. In other words, others are meant for good. In other words, election means salvation. Some people here are meant for salvation. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's like three days ago, I was talking with my wife. Because I programmed and I told you today will be our Thanksgiving. And after the Thanksgiving, then I go to Ghana. Then I come. And Ghana, we schedule all the churches. They are scheduled in such a way that this will end his fasting and prayers. And whatever I have done for you here, I have to do it for all the branches. So when this happened, school of thought was saying, wait. Then you add all together. School of thought, I said, wait for what? They also, I didn't say that, but this is how the conclusion was doing. Their death has nothing to do with the church members there. I don't know whether maybe as we are sitting here, one of the young church members in Kwando, and listen to me, I pick a pastor in Kwando, and before I pick that guy, the first day we went to have a Kwando service, this guy came in, he was our organist, and he came to play the organ. And that day, everybody was happy. The second time, the guy, we were looking for him to come and pray the organ. They have to pick him from town. By the time the guy was coming, oh, my goodness, you can be happy with the boozma. He was boozed to a extent that the guy was like he was walking with the head. And as soon as he got to the sanctuary and the parents was in the church too, everybody was getting mad. I said, no, please, leave him alone. Let's be patient with people. We treated him with patience, and all this continued. Some couldn't have continued. So they threw him like they are throwing him off board, and he happened to land in Nigeria. When this guy landed in Nigeria, he happened to associate himself with Christ, Christ's embassy. And he sat under Christ's embassy feet for a while, and then he remembered that the things we were teaching him was true. So he came back to Ghana this time. He came back to join the church. I sent I sent the pastor to Pando, and I'm telling you the amount that we were paying the pastor. If I talk about it here, you will say, Pastor, you are crazy. I said, No, we are doing this for good. Then that pastor, all of a sudden, I saw that he was using the church as a physical job. I said, No, this church is God's gospel. If I see your seriousness, that's why I don't care about money. But if you want to use it like a temporary job, I'm not paying anymore. Work and pay yourself. This guy left the church. As soon as he left the church, the spirit of God fell on this child. Now he is a Pando pastor. And let me tell you, among all the pastors we have in Ghana, he is number one. If this guy comes to stand here, the level of prophecy, the efficiency of English, the boy, how is he? 
recently they came to make wedding in Accra. And because the, the girl was from Tando Assembly, he has to come. And as soon as he landed in Accra church and the boy spoke, nobody was able to sit on his feet, on his bows. You, you, you understand me? The endurance, this is what he's talking about. Learn, put some seed in the ground and learn how to take the least from the seed. Just be patient for a while. There is tomorrow coming. You have no time for lamentation. Your blessings will come from east. Your blessings will come from south. Your blessings will come from north. You see, let me tell, let me tell you the truth. Let me tell you the truth. Let me tell you the truth and hear the truth. We are blessed in this room. And listen to me. Watch me. If I have ever come to stand here to tell you, church, let's pray about finances. Have you ever heard some from my mouth? No, 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 no. But look at what, what is going on in the world. Listen, as few as we are, this is one of the prosperous church on planet Earth. I'm telling you the truth. I am telling you the truth. I'm talking about peace of mind. I am talking about, therefore, David referred it. And let's go back to the scripture. Give me Psalms 23. If maybe we can read it together. Let's see what is there. Come on, go with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Oh, you like this? And I'm talking to you. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear him evil. You are rod, your staff, they comfort me. There you go. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my hair with oil. My cup runs over. Well, go. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I am looking for one Satan who can say, before you, because you went to black before the church, I will make you poor. Nobody can make me poor. Nobody can make you poor. Nobody can make you sad. You see, situation can let, let you be silent. Because if the Lord has anointed your head yes. with oil, yes. if he has, if he has, if he has caused you, called you. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when Sunday we come to church, my concern has never been the number of people that are here due to income burden. Are, are you understanding? If I get burden, it's a burden of souls that I want each and every one. But if it is money, last I was telling my wife that if it is about money, then we shall keep on postponing harvest uh, until we not have harvest. I am telling you the truth. If you are faithful to God and God anoints you, he adds up all provisions you need for all your everything. Try it and see. You can get to a standard in life. Nothing can bring you down and nothing can take you up. God can give you lances. A, that even when you speak, he has spoken. And that's the year I'm looking for. That's the year I'm looking for. That's the God I'm talking about. He, he, he listen to me. I, I sometimes look to myself and I ask myself, how is sickness like? And I say, God, I thank you. I don't even feel like how it is like sickness. I, 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 I've been going to hospital. And any time I go to hospital, the doctors will do all their scrutinizing to just to find out what is wrong with me. And any time we end, they don't find anything. And let, let us, I sat down and I asked myself, what is wrong? I said, I had the wisdom that, because I don't know how sickness is, if anything little, then I, my suspicion, you know, what do you call it? Because when you are here, when you are here. So all the time when I go and they tell me, oh, nothing. So sometimes when I can ask my wife, so what are we paying the insurance of? When, <laughs> when I go, the doctors don't give me attention. But uh, I find the truth that it's not they don't give me attention. But it's like, I don't know the difference is what the sickness and this. You understand? Me? God is so faithful. Oh, this lady, uh, uh, oh my goodness. God is so faithful. He is so faithful. Listen, I know what I'm talking about. He is so faithful. He is so faithful. I, I, I just, I don't want to mean to black. 
I, I had one house and it went almost to foreclosure. I whip and nearly whip my head off. And I said, God, what and how am I going to go about it? And then God brought the wisdom. And in all the foreclosure, it turned around. Last, just three days ago, I was having a talk with one of you. And we said, let's look at it. Let's, as soon as we went into it, this very foreclosure house, I saw it has 250,000 sitting in it. I said, how did this come? Is it magic or what? This is not magic. You see, God can bless you left. He can bless you right. He can bless you front. He can bless you backwards. Listen, keep quiet and look unto God. He can anoint your hair with oil. Where you are going through, what else others goes through, it will turn to be your swimming pool. And that is why you will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm, I'm, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank God for my father. I don't call it he has passed. If something passed, you don't see it anymore. Past is past tense. But he has gone to be with the Lord. It's like he has passed on to the Lord. Where we will be there one day. I'm not here to look for someone to sympathize me. I'm not here looking for soliciting for anything. There is God who is God of sufficiency. There is God who can make all grace, as my wife read, abounds. Oh, Jesus. And the faithful saying is, talk all the time. The way if God is standing here, how he will talk. Talk the way God will talk. Speak the way God will speak. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 someone was preaching and he said he went to London. The first time he prayed for some congregational members. And he prayed for a particular sick person who goes on the sick stops. And then when he prayed, this person celebrated and jumped. And he said, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. So that was how he left. Then the second visit he went. He caused sick, he came the same way. Then he prayed for him. I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. Then the third one, he prayed, this same person came. So in the next visit he came, he said, I'm not praying for this guy. So he took this guy to the pastor's office. And then when he asked him, what is wrong, you say you are healed. And another time you come again. He said, Pastor, let me tell you the truth. Here in Britain, when I come to church, I am healed. But after church, I have to still hold on to this thing. Because when I let the system know that I am healed, they will take off my right. Oh, I said, that you, uh, are you getting it? He just wants the society to know that the sickness is there. Oh, my goodness. Listen to me. I don't need that society sympathy. You understand me? So somebody, somebody was teaching my uh, my, my wife, that when you go to Ghana and it is the funeral, as soon as we get serious, weep and make it all miserable. Make it more mobo mobo so that people will sympathize with you and that your income and answerable will be big. I say, oh, 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 we don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. I will mean to entertain mobo mobo in my house. I will entertain joy joy in my house. I will entertain celebration in my house. Because I'm born with celebration. I'm born with fullness. I'm born with prosperity. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm glad when my daughter was testified. I have given them a level of training. When I brought them to this country, they asked me that. There were some things that happened we didn't understand first. But now we've seen your, you, you, your way of bringing us up. You know in Ghana, when you go to school, at break time, how the rich people, their children can buy good food. And uh, They said those time, at break time, people will buy food and the rest. And then they will not buy, buy because they can break and eat from the house. And so they said, ah, people were teasing them. Aren't you the, 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 the school owner's children? Why are you people not leaving this? And then, not knowing they kept it to themselves. They thought, ah, so that is school owner and so wicked. When they came here, they testified. So I'm just sharing their testimony. So they said they kept that thing to themselves. They didn't understand. And when they came here also, I trained them, let's work. You understand? When we were working with the white people, I took the whole cemetery. So this time, most of you buried Ghanaians there, Woodbridge Cemetery. I took the, 
Woodburn Cemetery, I took the whole cemetery as a contract, apart from our job. And as a pastor, those days I go to read with Kwame and Samuel. You come and you see us on the, Kwame and Junior, you will see us on the machine. And that was where we were getting extra income for other things. When they started school, I told them, none of you is going to the school. You are coming to teach. We pay you. You go to Nova. At the second year, the little you have saved, we will back you. When you go back to campus, you continue. When they call me, that we want to take loan, I said, no, don't take loan, but you can take the grant. But don't take the loan. So all of them have completed school without loan on them. Just this morning, this girl walked to my office. She said, Dad, I've understood your principle. I mean, just this morning, he came to my office. Instead of me to exhort her, she was exhorting me. Hallelujah. You see, that, that's the principle of life. I, love, I want to tell you the truth. My, my son, Kwame, you see how he went so fast. And for a reason why, for some time now, he is with us here. Kwame walked to me and he said, Dad, I'm not regretting the life you gave to us. But after I was going far, 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 far and faster, I thought I have to come back and learn certain basic things. And learn certain basic things. And he said, Dad, for some time now that I came for six weeks, even though I'm not taking any big check, uh, big check, but I can see the real peace of man, that my life is getting restored. You see, that set testimonies, they work more than millions to me. They work more than anything to me. But sometimes I talk to them. Please, I'm not here bragging. I have houses like we are standing here, more than 10 of this. I'm telling you the truth. I have more than 10 of what we are standing under. I can take care of my children, put them into any school. But that's a wrong mistake one will do on earth. I said, learn how to fish and take the fish from the ocean. If I give you the fish, you will eat them all. I'm telling you something. God, who is starting the year with you, you will not run out of testimony. You will not run off anything. There is God who takes care of life. Listen to me. I want to be open and bold to you. I want to tell you. Listen. When I want to talk about the faithfulness of God, I am like David. I'm talking about uh, David that has come from the wilderness. And Saul was going to challenge him. That day, be careful with Goliath. He said, at the wilderness, I knew what I conquered. Goliath is a small trouble for me. He was counting on the faithfulness of God. That if he helped him in the wilderness, he is not going to disappoint him before Goliath. And really, it came true. I'm here to lift you. I'm here to talk to you. We started the year. We're going through anointing. We've completed our prayers. We've gone through everything. But here, let me tell you, if you haven't seen any year that turns around human life, write it down and see. Write this year down and see. Write it down and see. Write it down and see. And please, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I don't have much to say. I told God, even when I start talking, he should fix me worse. I, I, I know, I know how even when I was coming to start the preaching, at once I got choked. Because I didn't know the word that I'm going to say the next. This thing I have spoken to you are not my words. Because any time I stand here, I permit him to speak. That's why I have never, listen to me, I've never been apologetic of when I'm preaching what I say. I always say I'm responsible for my words because I don't speak things that I imagine them. I don't talk things that I plan them. I talk things that the Holy Spirit gives. God bless you so much. God be with you. I prophesy over your life. It is well. You will not be the tail. You will not be the last. You will be the first. You are the head. You psych a man for success. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let, let's just make the line. Make the line and come one after the other. Bring me the oil. I'm just going to pray for each and everyone here. I will anoint everyone sitting here. I'm going to anoint everyone sitting here. 
Because he said, he anoint my hair with an oil. Make a line and come. He said, he anoint my hair with an oil. He anoint my hair with an oil. For his name's sake. For God's name's sake. All what I will do, goodness, mercy shall follow me. Oh, and not now. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Look at my Lord, you are faithful. 